Okay. Okay, so now we come to the uh, today's session. So, so to say, which is power dissipation. Hmm? So, what do you understand by the term power dissipation? Hmm? CV square. CV square. Yeah. That is all about power dissipation. But the first thing that comes into mind is CV square. The first thing that comes to your mind is CV square. Okay. So you say that there's some power that is consumed uh, when the operation is happening. Hmm? Uh, yes, sir. So that essentially is dynamic power. Hmm? Where you say, okay, this is something linked to CV square. Let us say. Hello. Then what about uh, short circuit currents? What is short circuit current? The line. Line. So like that we observed, like with that observed during the in the uh, static analysis, analysis that there is a point when both are on, both are in the saturation and there is a yes. direct. So it is a, when the short circuit path exists between VDD and ground, between the supply rails, during the switching operation, that is what is called as short circuit current. And the third component of power is leakage, the one that we were just harping about. So dynamic power consumption, Faisal said it is CV square. Huh? So actually it's proportional to CV square. It's not CV square, but it's proportional to CV square. So the power, so, but before we go into what it is, let us just also have a look at power as it is drawn from the voltage source. So power, when you talk of it in terms of instantaneous power would be characterized as IT into VT. That is current at any given point of time into the voltage at that point of time. Energy is integration of that power over time, hmm? over the entire cycle. And average power is then normalized energy over time. What are you interested in as a designer? What do you think is quoted on the data sheet? So there are two questions. Average power. You're interested only in average power, Faisal? Like it will give us a whole value, like after considering the complete. Uh, Sir, we should be more concerned about the dynamic power. So this is all about dynamic. Uh, so dynamic power is one component of it, Ranjit. Abhiyam, those components, that we are not even at those components yet. We are saying, Amongst these three things, instantaneous power, energy, and average power, what are you most interested in? Sir, uh, I think it should be instantaneous power, sir. Uh, because okay. we, we must be much precise about the current which we are flowing at a particular instant in our uh, transfer or something. Why? Because, uh, however, in the average power, sir, uh, we somehow get to reduce the whole value to a particular point. But... In instantaneous power, sir, uh, it might happen like sometimes the voltage is low and the current is high, so that this high current might not, I mean, like uh, say they uh, totally collapse our circuit. Okay. So what Vaishnav is saying is that I'm also interested in instantaneous power. In fact, he's saying I'm only interested in instantaneous power because that gives me an estimate of what kind of current is flowing. And with that, I can design my power grid. The current should not be so high that my power grid collapses. Hmm? Yes, sir. So somewhere I am interested in instantaneous power because it will give me an estimate of what kind of IR drop can happen. So I am interested in instantaneous power. But when I am making a product, hmm, I'm also interested in energy. That is, what is the total energy consumed, for example, in one calculation? 
so that I can then prolong the life of a calculator to run you know, 1 million calculations before the battery dies off. Because I have a very small battery, pencil battery there, pencil link, whoa, button battery there. Hmm? And average power, why do you think average power is important? Why is it even there on this screen there? Sir, to calculate our consumption, sir, at last, I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm like, Okay, for a laptop or something, the consumption might be low, but for uh, high appliances, then we are much like looking into the power so that, yeah, we don't end up, uh, we don't end up consuming high amount of power on a device. So when you turn a system on, a circuit on, hmm, let us say, you just even turn your tube light on or a tube, you know, a, a light bulb on, do you think it consumes the same power throughout? No, sir. No, what sir. happens? At the time when you're just turning it on, there could be extra sparks, extra power consumed because if it's a tungsten bulb, the initial heating needs to happen. Something needs to do, to be done. Hmm? Some extra power may go initially, but then you still quote one number that, okay, it will consume one watt. This is a one watt bulb or six watt bulb or something like that. Is it not? Yes. Yeah, sir. So that is average power, I think. Yes, yeah. that is average power. For yeah. a user to make a decision on which component to use, that user needs a, a value of average power. A typical user or a typical consumer is not interested in instantaneous power. Now, since the specification is given in terms of average power, a designer should also be concerned about average power also. But a designer also needs to look at instantaneous power so that there are no serious eye drop issues in any part of your design. Sir? Yes? Sir, Raghav? I'm not able to get the instantaneous power because sir, when we are designing the power rails, then we basically give the voltages across, we fix the voltages, VDD and ground. And the eye drop is with whatever is happening, it is happening because of the interconnects. But because that of will... The because, drop is of, happening. because of the wires and the interconnects through which we are basically transferring that. But yes. sir, sir, uh, so ultimately what exactly the power would be, instantaneous power would be at a particular time, would be basically defined by this V level. Na? Because I to drop hi hoga humara ultimately. Because of the... At so, the what all things are is I dependent on. Let us look at that then. Okay, sir, yeah. What are things is I dependent on? Sir, I think if there's a capacitor, then uh, uh, there, there might be a spike of uh, I, sir. I'm like, it's possible, right, sir? At any sir, point of time, we might have a capacitor in between and it might have a spike. Might have a capacitor? Do you think yeah. there might there is a possibility of a capacitor? Or do you know there are capacitors? Yeah, there yeah. are capacitors, sir. But there are some places there are, I'm not, uh, even we find some places where there are no capacitors. So huh? uh, I'm not, the, the variation of IT which we have isn't I'm not, isn't that linear which we think of. I'm like, so you tell me you've done simulations already, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's, I'm like, that's the reason why I'm like, for suppose that Miller capacitance effect in which we uh, see. So pick the... up your simulations and you will have answers to all these questions, Vaishnav. Hmm. Yes. So I am asking you a different question. What does I depend on? The resistance of wire, the, the VDD, uh, and the VR's resistance. The current depends on, okay, these resistances and. And supply. Supply level, okay. And we're talking about an inverter, SEMA circuit. The resistance of the channel. The resistance of the channel, okay. And so the region of operation. So width and the length. Yeah, that would define the resistance of the channel. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So the region of operation. The region of operation would move from all saturation to linear to everything, no? Yes. Okay. So One very important thing. Slew, slew, I think. Slew, slew, okay. That would say for how long the short circuit current will flow. Yes. Okay. Good. What else? Very important thing. 
बीटी को हमने चैनल रेजिस्टेंस में इंक्लूड कर लिया मोबिलिटी भी हमने वी हैव इंक्लूडेड इन द चैनल रेजिस्टेंस बिकॉज वी टॉक्ड अबाउट करंट ऑलरेडी ना यू टॉकिंग अबाउट करंट इन द चैनल रेजिस्टेंस वी हैव इंक्लूडेड वीटी एंड मोबिलिटी बोथ यस सर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग लोड यस समथिंग इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट charge so current means charge so tell me devya what does what do you mean by charge integration of current over time leads to charge so charge is dependent on the kind of current flowing or or what what do you mean to say with charge there sir operating voltage yeah we already talked about operating voltage sir frequency the mm. number of times this inverter will toggle is it not yeah yes because power will be what is the unit of power it is about the kind of charge consumed per second is it not it would be some measure of what is consumed per unit time yes hmm so what are we talking about we talking about number of times the toggling is happening so frequency has a very important role to play and associated with it is something called activity factor so we'll just come to those aspects but instantaneous power is also dependent then on frequency of operation if you want to limit the instantaneous power so that your ir drops reduce you have to reduce the frequency of operation for example okay so as a designer you are interested in all three of them okay and uh, in terms of how to represent power the power dissipated in a resistance is i square r and we know that the uh, you know charge stored on a capacitor energy stored on a capacitor is 1 by 2 cv square this is basic electronics that all of you know am i right yes sir okay so for us we said that there are two primary sources of power dissipation dynamic and static for the dynamic we said there are two components which which involve load capacitances and the other component which is short circuit current static power we said there are again multiple components sub threshold leakage the ids kind of current gate leakage and then also junction leakage okay and now we will look into all these different parts in a little detail through this we will you know for both for dynamic power and for static power we will assume that we are talking about a chip with 1 billion transistors okay of these 1 billion transistors so this is a typical chip a typical digital chip let us say hmm? and of these 1 billion transistors you will notice that 950 million transistors are related to memory cells hmm and 50 million transistors are logic transistors so in this course we are primarily talking about this part for the memory part we have this other course memory design and test that we will have in the next semester so but we are saying that there are 50 million logic transistors with an average width of 12 lambda lambda let us say is the minimum width or minimum uh, uh, size that you can make in a particular technology and we are also saying activity factor of 0.1 okay and then for the memory we are saying that memory devices because they are so large in number we want to keep them to be small memory array has devices which are averagely at 4 lambda size and because memory is so huge the activity factor is also actually lesser hmm the probability that a particular memory would be accessed is actually lower then we are talking about 1 volt 6, 65 nanometer process and we say that the gate capacitance is something like 1 femtofarad per micron and diffusion capacitance is something like 0.8 femtofarad per micron these are assumptions okay so when we do some uh 
uh, calculations going further in the next few slides, we will be going with these assumptions. Is that okay? Hmm? So, so exactly what uh, assumptions name is there? By this past assumption, what do you mean to say? So you assume that there are one, 1 billion transistors on a chip. We have assumed that 50 million of those are logic transistors. We have assumed that the average width of those transistors, logic transistors is 12 lambda and so on. So all these are assumptions. Okay. Hmm? And so the C is what is capacitive modeling here? The C, which capacitor is modeling? Both gate, gate and diffusion. Okay. The gate is 1 femtofarad per micron and the diffusion is 0.8 femtofarad per micron. That is the assumption. Sir, and lambda, does it represent 65 nanometer? Uh, you can't say that, Ranjit. You, you want to consider it like that, then 2 lambda is 65 nanometer. But it's not exactly the case. Today, there's nothing like... Uh, so in advanced technologies, lambda has lost its significance. So long back, long, long back, lambda used to mean half the half the pitch. So yes, uh, something like 65 nanometer for 65 nanometer technology, but uh, that may not be the case. So you just assume there is some lambda, some constant. Okay. Key, key point is that the logic transistors are typically three times bigger than the memory transistors. Just, just uh, consider this as an assumption that we have made. It's not a very far-fetched assumption though. It's a very realistic assumption, but an assumption nevertheless. Okay. 